Hey guys, welcome to a new video. Ever since moving to this new house, we've had problems keeping our energy usage under control. And to try and figure out what was going on, I bought some energy meters like these. And although those work great, we still don't really know where all this power draw is coming from. So I devised a new plan to figure that out. Now, this plan is going to be a sort of two-parter. First part, and that's what this video is about, is that we're going to use these little plug-in energy meters, which we're going to link to Home Assistant and Grafana. And the second part, and that's probably going to be later this year, is that we're going to do some measuring using current clamps, which we also want to get into Home Assistant and Grafana, to get an idea how much our big equipment, like our heat pump, is using. These plugs are more suited for, like, your TV or your freezer or... Or, I don't know, we have a ventilation box or my servers or all kinds of little things like that. So I've been waving this around a little bit already. And this is a Gasuna SP1. But originally, while looking around for these, I came upon the Blitzwolf, hold on, SHP2. And if you look that up, or will probably show it on the screen here somewhere, that actually looks exactly the same. And there's another brand called Technic, which also looks exactly the same. What was going on here? So, after looking around a little bit, it turns out that all these plugs are made by an OEM called Tuya. And Tuya actually makes these things and makes the firmware and the hardware and everything. And you can just buy a branded version of it. So, all of these products are basically the same, and that's good because we want to use the hardware that's inside of here. Now, these are built using the ESP8266 platform, which we nowadays use in, well, basically all the things. But that also means they are probably very hackable and we can run our own firmware. And well, this turns out to be the case. So currently these plugs have been, uh, well, hacked as they say, and you can use a soldering method to which you connect some cables to some pins internally and then use a USB to serial converter to flash a new firmware. You can run Tasmoda or, as I've been doing for the past few days, run ESP Home. And actually, since a few weeks or a few days, whatever, a new method has surfaced where a German research firm basically kind of hacked or man in the middle attacked the firmware upgrade process that's in here, where you can actually flash these units without having to open them up and solder anything. Now, it's questionable how long that will remain functional, but as it is functional right now, and uh, I went a bit overboard and I bought 18 of these, and uh, well, flashing them over the air from the manufacturer firmware to ESP Home is a lot easier than opening it up and soldering wire, so that's what I've been doing. And I thought, hey, while this is working, let's share it with you guys. And I'm going to try and make a little guide on, on how to do this. And uh, as I said, you can run these with uh, Tasmoda or some other firmware. But I like using ESP Home. And actually, I've been spending the past few days mapping these things out. So now, basically, everything this thing does works. And with that, I mean the measuring the power, so the wattage, amperage, and voltage works. But also, this little button works. And you can uh, command the red and the blue LED that's inside. But that's kind of crazy when you think about it, because that means that everywhere where I have one of these plugged in, I have a little button that's now available in Home Assistant, which I can use to trigger, well, anything. Okay, um, maybe not that, but... Well, yes, that, but let's try and make it do more useful stuff, but we'll look into that in another video. So as I mentioned, this video will be about the OTA way. If you would like a video about how to use the soldering connections and then flash this unit, let me know in the comments and I might consider making a video about that in the future. To use this remote OTA hack, you're going to need a few things. You're going to need a Linux PC, and it needs to have a wireless connection and either a second wireless connection or a cabled connection. And 
This can be anything from like a Raspberry Pi with a Wi-Fi dongle or a Raspberry Pi 3 B plus, which has Wi-Fi built in or a simple PC that's running Linux, which you can add a Wi-Fi dongle to like uh, something like this. And that's exactly what I did. I have a normal Ubuntu 1804 PC running and I added one of these wireless sticks. Now I had three lying around the house and two of them worked and one of them didn't. And that has to do with the compatibility, what they tried to do with the wireless stick. Uh, but I'll have a link in the description where you can buy some uh, cheap versions of these that should work. So another thing I'm going to assume is that you have Home Assistant installed. I'm running Home Assistant on Has.io and you have the ESP Home or ESP Home YAML plugin installed. If not, do so first. This guide isn't about that. And well, once you have that, open it up and you can follow along. So when you open up ESP Home, we're going to create a new configuration. And in my case, I'm going to call it temp underscore flash. Here we select a generic ESP8285 module And make sure our values for the Wi-Fi SSID, password, and OTA password are correct. The rest we're going to configure later on. I'll have a blog post also linked in the description, which will have all the text fields and stuff like that in there, so you can copy them easily. Once you have all that filled in, hit the three little dots on the right and hit compile. This will build the ESP home firmware and give you a binary file we're going to use later. Okay, next is setting up your Linux computer. As mentioned, this can be any Linux computer which has Wi-Fi, and not all Wi-Fi cards work, but as I mentioned, there will be a USB dongle in the description. And, um, well, I'm just gonna assume you have this, otherwise you can't perform this guide and you'll have to use the soldering method, for which you need to buy parts. Or maybe it's interesting to you to buy a Raspberry Pi 3 B+, which has Wi-Fi built in, which you can use for this and many other projects, even to run Home Assistant if you wanted to. Okay, we're going to start by downloading a software package called GitHub. Once that installed, I'm going to use uh, a git command to pull down the software. And again, all these commands will be listed in text blocks on the associated blog post. So if you want to follow along, it's easiest to use that. Okay, once Git has downloaded the software, enter that folder and there's a little script file which will automatically install all the needed software. So for me, I ran into a little problem, probably because I'm running Ubuntu 18 and that's that NPM wouldn't install correctly. But after using the aptitude package manager, this worked fine and I could continue. Once that is done, we need to configure the config.txt file. While your wireless card, dongle, or whatever is plugged in, run a dmessage grep wlan to find the current adapter name. Copy that name and enter it into the config file as the wireless adapter, and also enter your LAN adapter as you can see here.
Okay, we're going to start up the program using the start flash script file. While that is started, I'm going to open up a second terminal window because I want to be able to follow and see if everything's working correctly. In that terminal window, we're going to tail a log file so we can see the log messages while they happen. Okay, once that's running, keep it running and keep an eye on it so we can see what's going on. Now we're just going to follow the on-screen instructions. First, it asks us to answer yes and hit enter, but we know that if we screw up or this thing screws, screws up our hardware, well, that's our own problem, not theirs. Then it tells you it started a new wireless access point using the VTrust flash SSID and to connect your phone to this access point. You have to do this first to verify that it's working and second, uh, otherwise for some reason the flashing doesn't work correctly. Once your phone is connected, it should automatically get an IP. But for me, again, this didn't work as expected. In my case, it was because a system daemon from Ubuntu was running on port 53, while the software also tries to run something on port 53. So that was easily solved by running a stop command, uh, which would stop the system process from listening on that port. And now the software script could start whatever it wanted on that port. And now it worked correctly and my phone would get an IP. Okay, once we continue past that point, it's time to plug in the power meter into a wall socket. And you want to hold down the button that's on top of there until you see this blue flashing pattern. Sometimes you have to try around with this a little bit and maybe restart the software a few times or uh, pull out the plug and push it back in and try again with the button. But after a while, you should see that on the plug, the blue flashing light stops, and that means it has connected to our access point. Just a little while later, you'll see a lot of text flashing over the screen, and that means it's making a backup copy of the firmware that's on the module right now, and uh, they are in contact with each other. Once that is done, You'll be returned to the command prompt, but it shows you on the screen how you can run several commands. Now the first line is flashing the module with a basic Tasmoda version, and you can use that if you want to run Tasmoda on the module. But as I mentioned, I like ESP Home better, so we're going to use the second line and use that binary file we generated earlier. So. I move that binary file into the files directory and then I enter the command to send that file to the plug. And although it seems like nothing happens, in the background the plug downloads that file and flashes it to its own firmware. And now the device is running ESP Home. So go into your router and check the IP it gave the new smart plug now running on your wireless network. And the easiest check is just going to that IP with a web browser and you should see a page like this with a simple web server on there that will show you some statistics. And well, that's where I'm going to end this part of the video, but there should be a next part really soon and it's probably linked in the description and over the right and you know, where we're going to use our ESP home configuration and add it to Home Assistant. And then I'll probably do a third part on how to make some graphs in Grafana to actually make some use of the measurements we're doing. So, thanks for watching, and uh, well, uh, yeah, well, click the next video. And if it's not there yet, 
check back tomorrow and well maybe subscribe because then you'll get a notification <laughs> so yeah thanks for watching and uh, see you in a bit <laughs>